1950, American scientists were perfecting color television, tranquilizers, and Xerox copying machines. Amateur inventors all over the world were creating gadgets galore to make our lives easier and more fun. There was the radio-controlled golf caddy. lawnmower to make our suburban life even more mobile. One ingenious angler built a flying boat as a way around or over traffic jams on rivers and lakes. And a company in Ohio considered marketing an inflatable plane that could fold up and fit in the trunk of a car. There were many advances in flying in the early 50s, like the world's largest jet helicopter built by Howard Hughes, and radical new turboprop fighters that could take off and land vertically. By mid-decade, Boeing was testing our first jetliner, the 707. And our new intercontinental B-52s were in fail-safe positions all over the world. In 1957, Major John Glenn flew a Navy Crusader coast to coast in three hours and 23 minutes, reaching speeds of better than a thousand miles an hour. In 1959, the Navy X-15 rocket plane flew at 3,000 miles an hour and altitudes of 300,000 feet. The X-15 was designed to carry our first astronauts into space, and at the end of the decade, test pilots were practicing moon landings on the desert. The most dramatic medical advance of the 50s was the Salk vaccine that immunized us against polio. When a bill was presented for Congress to provide free soft vaccine to all children, Mrs. Ovita Culp Hobby, Ike's Secretary of Health, was horrified. She called the plan socialized medicine through the back door. Other medical news was not so good. In 1953, smoking was first linked to cancer and heart disease. Cigarette consumption dipped for two years, but resumed its rise in 55 after the tobacco industry pumped millions into TV advertising for new filter tips. Promenade straight down the pike. It's time right now for a lucky strike. Yes, for a smoking that you're bound to like, you just can't beat a lucky strike. The first hydrogen bomb explosion in 1952 opened a new era of deathmanship. Since 1945, when the first A-bomb was exploded, American scientists had argued the morality of developing super bombs, perhaps a thousand times more destructive than those dropped on Japan. The decision to create an arsenal of new nuclear weapons was made right after Russia exploded her own atom bomb in 1949. High on the Pentagon shopping list was the atomic cannon, an awesome piece of hardware that was semi-retired when ground-to-ground -ground missiles became operational at the end of the decade. And in 1954, Mrs. Eisenhower christened the Nautilus, the world's first atomic submarine. The Nautilus could circle the globe underwater. And in 1958, the ship sailed submerged from Hawaii to Great Britain, under the North Pole.
Not all atomic research of the 50s was military. Since Hiroshima, scientists were experimenting with nuclear energy as an alternative to oil, gas, and coal. In 1957, an atomic power plant, the pilot model for Three Mile Island, was proudly unveiled to the public. Other visionaries were not so certain that the public would ever accept nuclear power. Fearful of another oil cutoff, after Iran's refineries were nationalized in 51, scientists began to experiment with solar batteries. On October 4th, 1957, Soviet scientists shocked the world by orbiting a Sputnik around the Earth. We were worried that if the Russians could launch a baby moon in outer space, they could certainly reach America with intercontinental missiles. President Eisenhower assured us there was no missile gap. Speed of progress in the satellite project cannot be taken as an index of our progress in ballistic missile work. Our satellite program has never been conducted as a race with other nations. I consider our country's satellite program to be well designed and properly scheduled to achieve the scientific purposes for which it was initiated. In 1958, America finally launched a 30-pound satellite into orbit. And as the decade ended, Russia and the U.S. set their sights on the moon.